But hey, we're excited for today because over the course of today and then on our first Wednesday, we're having 12 different speakers that are a part of Oasis Church getting to minister and to share the word. And and one thing here at Oasis you may not realize is we are so blessed to have so many people that are gifted by God and have a heart to serve God. And so what we wanted to do over this weekend and then also at our first Wednesday service, which is going to be this Wednesday, 715, it's always packed, just like he said, make sure you get here early so you can get a seat. But but we, we want to give people an opportunity to speak what we feel like God is saying to them. Because because here's what can happen a lot of times in church, and it, it even happens here. Uh, my wife Hannah and I, uh, my wife Hannah and myself, Alex, we're we're the lead pastors here, and then our senior pastors Jonathan and Stephanie. Uh, we we switch a lot, so I'll speak, and then my dad, who's Jonathan, will speak. And so a lot of times we can get in this thing of well, who's who's preaching this Sunday? And I well, I kind of like this person better, and I kind of like Pastor. I know you all like Pastor Jonathan better. It's okay, it's okay. But but it's like who who's speaking speaking this week and who's speaking this week. And, and even today, you might be coming in and be like, man, I was really hoping who are these three people, I don't even know who these people are. Who did, what is their certification? Where did they go to Bible college? What, but, but what can happen is, is, is we can come in church and even the songs we sing, it can be like, well, they got to sing my song. Like if I'm, if I'm going to worship, they, they better sing my song and it better be in the key of C so that I can hit that note because I can't sing that good. So it's like, oh, you know, it, it's got to be, it's got to be my song and, and it's got to be, you know, my favorite speaker and all that sort of stuff. But, but really that's not how it should be. But because when we come to church, one, it's not even so much about the songs that we hear or anything. Cause you can listen to worship music at home. Like, did you know all these songs are on Spotify? Like you can listen to them at home and, and you can worship at home. You can read your Bible at home. But, but what happens is, is when we come together, there, there's the gathering of the saints. So there's all these people you get to hang out with your family. You get to see other believers. You get to encourage each other. You get to worship with one another. You get to pray with one another. That's something that you can't do on your own. But, but when we come and hear the, the word of God, it, it shouldn't be so much that we're coming to expect something to hear from someone. Like, like I, I'm coming, I, I want to hear from pastor so-and-so or, or this person or that person. It, it shouldn't be that we're coming to hear a, a certain personality or a certain style or whatever it may be. It, it should be that we're coming to hear a word from God, that, that God is going to use people, but, but it doesn't matter what the person sounds like. It doesn't matter if they're my style or, or it, whatever it may be, that, that we're here to hear a word from the Lord. And, and so that's why we have been very intentional. Every one of these services, there are people that are different ages, different teaching styles, different preaching styles, uh, different backgrounds, different educations, all different things. Because here's what I know. I, I'm believing that every one of these speakers is going to speak specifically to someone in this room. That, that there's going to be someone that maybe you don't relate to all of them, but one of these three speakers, I, I'm believing that you are going to be pricked, that, that your, your heart is going to be pricked, that you're going you're gonna to feel something when they are speaking. And, and then even more than a practical sense, I, I want all of you to see that, hey, there's somebody like me up there speaking, but because you don't, you don't know this. If you only knew the stories of the people that are about to bring the word. And I know there's so many people in our church today and you're like, man, there's nobody that's done things like I've done them. There's nobody that's been down the road that I've been on. There's nobody that's messed up as bad as I've messed up. Trust me, if only you knew. And so what I want to do is I want to encourage you and and let you know that that God can use somebody like you. And, And I don't mean that as a derogatory. I mean that as an encouragement that when you beat yourself up and you put yourself down and you're like, God can never use me. And I've done, no, no, no. I want you to know that God can use us all, that we can all come together. (laughs) Come on. We can all come together and that God's going to speak to us. So so I want you to get ready, get your notebooks out, get your phones out. Because here's what I want you to do. I, I want you to just imagine I know I just said that all about not worrying about the person, but you just think about whoever your favorite preacher is. Alex Huber, if it's me, you know, just just saying. But but think think about whoever your favorite preacher is. If it's T.D. Jakes or Stephen Furtick or Bill Johnson or whoever. And and I want you to respond to these three speakers the way that you would respond to those people. So so, so if you would be taking all the notes with them, I want you to take all the notes today. If you would be clapping with them, I want you to be clapping today. If you would be sitting there like this with them, I guess you can sit there like this with them, but I'm a little too spastic for that. So I'm going to be all over the place, but I just want you to get ready to receive from God. So we got, we got Mr. I'm going to introduce them all real quick. And then they're just going to go rapid fire. They're not really going to introduce themselves very much, but we got Mr. Donald Durio. Come on, let's give it up for him. We got Jessica Conzen over here. We got Tony Hernandez. Come on, so why don't you make some noise? Why don't you give it up for our first speaker, Mr. Donald Durio? Come on, come give us a word from God today. Come on, 
Hallelujah. I'm so happy to be a part of Oasis family, you know. The song says, in my father's house, there's a place for me. You know, it years, a couple of years back, we came to Oasis and we had some broken stuff in our life, some pain that we were going through. But I'm happy to tell you that we hold this morning. Amen. Yeah. Hey, y'all, y'all don't believe me. Look at this beautiful lady on the front row. That's my wife right there. Oh, yeah, we, we hold. But thank God. He's awesome. God. The word that I'm sharing this morning is together we can finish strong. Together we can finish strong. This is, this is a word from the Lord for those of you that may be going through and having some challenges going through your life. And uh, maybe you even discourage you. You find some things that God has spoken to you. Matter of fact, the things that God has spoken to you, they sound better than what you actually live in right now. You maybe have some challenges that you're dealing. You're wondering, where is my next opportunity? Where is my coming through point? See, some of you may be going through life and wondering what is next for me. You know, I, I, I know that God said it, and people are always telling me these things, but I'm not really feeling it. Am, am I talking to anybody this morning? All right. And, and see, I, I want to start out this morning. God wants to remind you from Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. And it says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit. Are better, uh, are better than the proud in spirit. So I'm going to start us off this morning. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. I might be a mess, <laughs> but wait for it. Wait for it. I, I want you to look at your other neighbor and tell him, no neighbor, oh neighbor, oh, neighbor. there's a royalty inside of you, <laughs> but wait for it. Wait for it. You see, I want to talk to you a little bit about 1 Samuel. And when 16th chapter of 1 Samuel, we find that Samuel's been sent to Jesse's house because God has decided Saul's not doing the job. Saul is, has made up his own rules, so I'm mo- moving him from being king, and, I, and I've got a king that I've chosen after my own heart. And he, so he sends him out to Samuel's house, and many of you may know the story about King David, and we talk a lot about King David and the things that he's done. But what happens is that Samuel sent to Jesse's house. And I'm going to read a quick verse of scripture in First Samuel chapter 16. I believe it's around verse 5. If I can get that up on the screen this morning. There we go. And he said, peaceably, I am come. Basically, he's letting him know that I came to town because when, when the prophet shows up, people get nervous. It's kind of like sometimes we come to church and we know all the stuff that we've been through and we get nervous. And some of it, we sit upright, maybe nobody will notice. So I'm going to just sit here. So they were a little bit concerned when Samuel showed up in town. And so they asked him, did you come here for peace, Samuel? Let let us know. And he says, "Uh, I'm come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to sacrifice. And many of us remember the story where he shows up and he anoints David. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning where he got anointed? And maybe some of you in your life, God has spoken a word over your life. But a thing I want us to bring to understanding this morning he showed up for Jesse, for David, but he showed up at Jesse's house. I want y'all to hear me. He, he came for David, but he showed up at Jesse's house. And if you read the story through, he says that he had his sons to come before Samuel and say, maybe this is the next king. And so he brought out his first firstborn son, Eliab, and he's like, no, that ain't him. Next thing he said, well, bring out Abinadab, maybe it's him. No, no, it's not him. And he, he brought out a third son, Shama. And he's like, no, that's not him. And you're like, so what does that have to do with anything? Because see, some of us in our hurt condition, we have presented some stuff and we hope that God would bless that. Some of us saw, you know, this first thing, you know, I put my strength. This is my firstborn, God. This is my best. And we put that forward and God said, no. And, and sometimes we, we came to our next thing. It was like, Lord, I learned some lessons the last time I went through. So this time, this must be what you want, Lord. And then God said, no. And he said, well, this last son, Shama, his name means astonishment. God, this thing is so good, it surprises me. <laughs> God, I, and this must be what you want. And God says no. But see, what well, we need to understand sometimes, we need those no's in our life to get to the yes. See, see, it's the no that make me appreciate the yes in my life. And so, and so what has happened, he said, uh, uh, I, I'm going to send all of my sons before you. And he said, he goes through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sons, and none of them are the ones that God wants. And for those of you that discourage, you may be going through some stuff, and God has said no to you one, two, three, four, and five times, but wait for it. Look at your neighbor and say, wait for it. 
There's some good stuff coming out of your life. Seven sons birthed out of Jesse. The very best out of, out of his loins has come this thing that I just knew it was going to be the way it is. See, when we first showed up here at Oasis, man, we had some stuff going on. You know, some brokenness, some hurts, and we were wondering, what's next? And I don't know about you, you may have some of that stuff going. Anybody else in here got some stuff that they're going through? Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and you may be wondering, I, I, I think I'm, I, I'm at church, so maybe things are better. But I, look, I want you to be encouraged this morning. It's not how you come in the door. It's how you go out. Yeah. It, 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 it's not about how you're feeling. Because, see, when you're coming in and you're broken, that's why we got greeters and all these folks at the door. We're going to help you get in the door. But when we're going out, we want you to go out with the Holy Ghost in your life. So we, somebody say, wait for it. Wait for it. See, see maybe you're just not sure. What's going to happen next in your life? But I want you to be encouraged. And when I say together we can finish strong, you need that person that's sitting next to you. He's going through, she's going through some stuff, but look over to him and say, wait for it. See, see, there's some good stuff in your life. See, that's why Job said in 14 and 14, if a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time, I will wait Till my change come. So, look, don't get discouraged because you're not in your happy place right now. Wait for it. Don't get discouraged because things not turning out. Your bills ain't all paid. Wait for it. And if you're waiting on that job, that baby to be born, that grandchild to get right, somebody say, wait for it. See, see God, God's got some good stuff in store. See, perhaps you're still focusing on things that you thought it should be this way by now. I'm a certain age. By now, I should have been in X, Y, Z play. But do you realize David got anointed when he was like between 10 and 15 years old? That means 15 years he waited to be sitting on a throne. Oh, you, you like, but maybe I ain't got 15 years. I'm already a little bit great. Maybe, maybe I don't have, but God says time don't matter nothing to me. Because, see, I, I put something right next to you. I put something in your neighborhood. I put somebody in your house. I put somebody in your workplace just to let you know that there's royalty on the inside. Just wait for it. Just wait for it. I'm encouraged when I look at the scripture in Haggai chapter 2, verse 9. He said, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. And somebody ought to get excited about that part right there. Because, see, when I was little, when I was younger, when I was just coming to faith, I was jacked up. But wait for it. Because the latter part of my life, the, 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 I'll say that again, the latter part of my life is going to be greater than the former. The scripture says, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud. God has got something in store for you today. See, what you need in your life, you recognize that your battle, the victory you need in your battle takes more than one voice. It, it, it takes more than mine. I remember about Jehoshaphat when they were going to battle and they didn't know whether they could win or whether they would lose. I said, Lord, I don't have an answer for this, but, but my eyes are on you. He said, I want you to go out to the battle. Don't worry about it. Just bring everybody with you. And he said, when he got there, he said, instead of sending out the guys with all the arrows, the guys with all the bows, I need to get the folks that can praise and the ones that can sing. And so what I'm saying to you this morning in your life, you may not be a singer. Everybody don't belong up here. You may not be a singer, but if you can praise, we can make it through. Amen. Yo, see, we, we, we got what it takes on the inside. But the big thing that we got to learn how to do, come on, y'all say it with me. Wait for it. Wait for it. So this morning, you're you getting ready to get the most phenomenal words that you've heard all week long. Because God is doing something to not set you up for your now. He's setting you up for your hereafter. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because I don't look the way I used to look. I don't feel the way that I used to feel. But I can tell you this, I'm better today than I was yesterday. Amen. Look at your neighbor one more time. Say, neighbor. Wait for it. Woo. Woo! How am I supposed to follow that? Let's give him another round of applause. Man, 1030, you are looking good. I am glad to be here. First, I'd like to thank Pastor Jonathan and Stephanie Suber. I know you guys are watching. I am so honored that you um, allowed me to share my heart and Pastor Alex and Hannah for you guys as well. I love you so much. Um, and if you guys wouldn't mind, I am gonna say a quick prayer to thank the Father as well, so bow your heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. I ask, Father, that you open every 
mind and heart in this place to your spirit of revelation. I thank you for anointing my lips and I thank you for your presence today. In your heavenly name I pray, amen. Amen. Well, my name is Jessica. I am the ministry's assistant here at Oasis. I have three beautiful children, Jack, Lily, and Judah, and a super handsome husband that's sitting on the front row right here. But my life 10 years ago looked very different. I found myself as a single mom, a store manager of a retail store, and I was reading a book to try to change my son's biological father, because that always works. And it was a Christian book. And what ended up happening was I was hit by the power of the Holy Spirit in the back of that retail store. And I hit my knees on that hard concrete floor. And I told the father from here on out, it would be complete obedience. So what I did is I moved out of my son's biological dad's house. I quit my job and I walked into a local church where I would spend the next seven years planting my roots. I knew that I didn't just have my life to be obedient for. I had my sons. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about together we can restore legacy by being planted in the house of the Lord. My choices would forever affect him. You know, I walked into that church and I felt like I had a scarlet letter on my on my chest. I remember sitting in that parking lot shivering and crying with a nine-month-old in the back of my car because I was so desperately afraid of being judged. But I did whatever I could to be at that church. I dug my roots down deep. I served at every opportunity. I cleaned toilets. I worked in kids' ministry where I had 23 two-year-olds on Mother's Day. That was my last time for kids' ministry. Because I knew that my future and my son's future relied heavily on the depth of my roots. In Psalms 92, 12 through 14, it says, The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. They still bear fruit in old age, and they are ever full of sap and green. Let's unpack that a bit. The cedars of Lebanon. Generally, most trees, for every 10 feet they go high, they only have a root system of three feet. For the cedars of Lebanon, for every 10 feet they go high, they have a root system of 30 feet. I think it's pretty amazing that God uses the cedars as an illustration They're slow moving, slow growing, and unshakable. It's very similar to how, as an example, we should be as Christians. It's vital to our growth to remain where God has planted us. The second part of that verse says they are planted in the house of the Lord and flourish in the courts of God. The Bible has called us together. Jesus commanded the great commission of discipling together. This local house believes it so much, it's a part of our core belief. Based off Ephesians 2, every person born of the Spirit, that means you, is an integral part of this church. And if your roots are deep enough and you dig down, you can receive strength and encouragement. The word house is a noun which basically means a dwelling where a family lives. Well, guess what? Your family and you don't always get along, do you? You get offended. I got offended, but you know what? I got over it. I got my feelings hurt, but it didn't let me stop going in that door because I knew I had to dig my roots down deep. And when the seasons of change came, because they always do, and winter comes, If your roots are deep, instead of it being a time of desolation, it's a time to retreat and renew. He has has created those seasons for a purpose. They still bear fruit in their old age. 
they're ever full of sap and green. My fruit was marrying that red-headed man that's on the front row. I met him at the local house. My fruit is having my two younger children afraid and then me hearing my 10-year-old rebuke the spirit of fear from the bedroom. My fruit is every time my six-year-old daughter sees somebody in a wheelchair or sick, she wants to go up and pray for them. My fruit has been watching my dream of ministry unfold because of this house, because these pastors believed in me, because I was planted. So today, I come to encourage you. Are you lonely? Get planted in the house of the Lord. Are you fearful? Get planted in the house of the Lord. Do you want a husband? Get planted in the house of the Lord. Allow your roots to grow deep in the local house and watch your fruit be in abundance and watch your legacy be restored. Thank you, guys. Come on, everybody. Give God a shout of praise. Amen. How do I go on after that? Y'all look so beautiful today. I'm going to try to behave myself. But when I think of everything that God's done in my life, even restoring legacy, finishing strong, it brings me to a place of together we can honor. Come on, somebody. Together we can honor. And that word honor in the Greek means value, place an emphasis on value. But what happens when you don't value where you're at? What happens when you don't value your current position? What happens when you don't value your current now? And I had to understand that I had to value my past to understand where my current situation is. I had to understand that I had to value where I was. Come on, somebody, to understand and embrace my now. Because if I don't value my now, I can't value my future. What happens when you don't value the person right next to you? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need you. Turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, I need you. Because you don't know what they did or went through to get here today. They, they, they could have pushed past on empty, but they still came. Come on, somebody. They could have been on their last $5, but they still came today. Come on, somebody. Together, we can honor. And that's something that this house places an emphasis on is honor, value. Because I knew in my rut, come on somebody, that I wasn't worthy enough to be here today. If you knew where I came from, come on somebody, that I should have died in my addiction. I should have died in my overdose. I should have died when I was out there gang banging and doing my thing. I should have, could have, but God said, no, there's a value that I put on the inside of you, that you are mine, that you are my chosen child. Yes, you should have died. Yes, you should have been forgotten. Yes, you could have, should have, and would have, but God said, no, that is my child. I put a value on you. That's why I paid the price. I died. I became sin so that you could receive my righteousness, so that you could understand that once you catch the revelation of who you are, that you don't want to be anybody else. Once I understand the value that I have on the inside of me, once that I understand that I was bought with a full price, then I'll begin to honor my position now. I'll begin to honor where I am now. I'll begin to honor that single mother I'll begin to honor that man that's, that doesn't have a house. I'll begin to honor that person that smells. Come, come on, somebody. Might take them to the bath, but we're we going to honor them. Come on, somebody. You need to honor everybody around you because you don't know what they're going through. They could be there on their last limb of hope, but because you place a value on them, because you show them honor, then now you're depositing hope. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. So when you deposit hope inside of them, it ignites something inside of them to where they're like, maybe I can keep going. Maybe I can do it. Maybe I can run that business. Maybe I can fulfill that dream. Maybe I can get that job. Come on, somebody. Maybe my child will get saved. Maybe my husband will get saved. But it depends on if you're going to put honor and an emphasis of value on somebody. How do you honor your past? 
How do you honor your present? Don't be ashamed of where you came from because it was the very place of where you came from that molded who you are. Before, I used to be ashamed to share my testimony. I used to be ashamed of talking about how I was molested. I used to be ashamed of talking about how I was raped. I used to be ashamed of how I saw my cousin get shot in the head. I used to be ashamed of how I used to wet the bed because I'd wake up in night terrors revisiting that again. But God said, no, I'm going to erase all those nightmares because I have a dream on the inside of you that I'm going to fulfill. He took every night terror and night feel so that I could deposit hope and dreams inside of people. Come on, somebody. I didn't believe in God. I didn't want to believe in God. Come on, somebody. How do you believe in God when you grew up broke? How do you believe in God when everything around you is messed up? How do you believe in God when you see people addicted, overdosing? How do you believe in God when you have to sleep below the window because of, because of, 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 of gunshots? Because most people, when they do drive-by, they shoot up. They don't shoot down. Come on, somebody. How do you believe in God when your mother's addicted and leaving you with different people that you don't even know for two, three weeks at a time? How do you believe in a God like that? How do you believe in a... But God said, what the enemy meant for bad, I'm going to take it and turn it around so that one day you can put a value stamp on it and say that has value now to get somebody out, to bring somebody out. Your pit is somebody else's palace. Come on, somebody. You had to go through so that you can take them out. Uh, I would, I'm going to try to behave myself. Y'all stop it. Y'all quiet down. Value, honor in the Greek is the Greek word to me, which means to value. So when you put a value on something, you're giving their approval. So now I'm saying, Lord, I thank you for when I was broke. I thank you when I was broke, busted, and disgusted. I thank you, Lord, for my mess. I thank you for my misery because you turned it into ministry. I thank you, Father God, that all the hell I went through was to bring somebody out. Come on, somebody. That it was in that cell. Looking at 10 to 20 years locked up, it was in that cell that he laid his hands on me and said, I'm going to give you a fire that can't be contained and a zeal that make people uncomfortable. And I didn't understand that until I got around church folk. Come on, somebody. Because they will always try to put a, a not, not every, not this house. I'm just saying some church folk. They will try to put on their armor on you to devalue what God did on the inside of you. The world will even try to put their armor on you to say, no, you got to do it like this. No, you got to be like this to make you devalue and deappreciate yourself. But God said, no, 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 no. I value you more than rubies and stones. I took on the price and the wrath and the purchasement of God's wrath so that you can be valued. The other, the, the other word for honor or value means to be paid in full and to receive the full penalty of. And God said, no, I, I sent my son so that he could receive the full penalty so that you were bought in full, not half price, not on, not on clearance, so quit treating your life like you're on half price or you're on a sale. You were bought with the full price, meaning he, bur he purchased you in the fullness of who you are because you are his child. You are his beloved. You are his. Come on, somebody. So I need some of y'all to open up the book of remembrance and remember of what God pulled you out of, that you weren't always cute with the, with, with the J on your fingernail, that you were broke. Come on, somebody. That you weren't always with your Stacey Adams on, that you always didn't have your button-up shirt. Come on, somebody. Some of y'all need to open up the book of remembrance and remember of what God pulled you out of. Remember that it wasn't always good because sometimes we go through life and we forget of what God did for us. And we need to begin to honor our place now, saying, Lord, I thank you for every trial. I thank you for every broken dream. I thank you for making me feel forgotten because I knew you were with me. Though I walked through the valley in the shadow of death. It's not death. It's the shadow of death. I almost lost my mind, but you were with me. 
I almost gave up my dream, but you were with me. I almost committed suicide, but you were with me. Who am I talking to in this place that you feel like it's the shadow of death, but God is depositing something on the inside of you saying, I am with you. Don't give up on that dream yet. Don't give up on that desire yet. Don't give up on that ministry yet. Don't give up on your child yet. I am the product of a praying mother. When everybody told her to forget about me, why are you doing that? Don't pray for him no more. I remember waking up to my mother, hearing her pray. To now I'm appreciative of her. I remember hearing her speak in the Holy Ghost. I thought she was speaking in some crazy language. But it's the byproduct of her diligence saying, no, Lord, I honor, I value what you've done in my life. That she turned her life around, that, she's no, that she was no longer sleeping with other men, that she was no longer in the club, that she turned her life around. Because God, what God, when God pulls you out of something, he will set your feet upon it, the rock to where you are planted. And I thank God for everything he's done. Honor, number one, honor your past. Number two, honor your present. And number three, honor, value your journey. Honor your journey. Honor your process. Honor where you're at. Come on, somebody. Honor everything that God has done in your life. Because when God does it, nobody can take it away. When God sets you free, nobody can bind you up again. Come on, somebody.